to look at is we're going to look at NRS standards and skill remediation. But before that, we're going to look at, you know, what individual learning is. We'll talk about those individual learning plans. And then I'm going to show you how to use Aztec learning views and also the assignments tools to create those individualized learning plans. So let's look first at what individualized learning is. This definition comes from the International Society of Technology and Education, or as we all know them, ISTE. And their document, Personalized versus Differentiated versus Individualized Learning, post on their website. So individualized learning is instruction calibrated to meet the unique tastes of various students. So for my distance learning students, I make this point very clear to them when they first enroll in my class. Every single one of you are unique. Your individual placement assessments tell me where you are skill-wise, and wherever you are is where you are, and that's where we're gonna start. We're going to work at your own pace on the skills and content that your placement assessments show me that you actually need to review. And we're going to skip the stuff that you don't need to review. Those academic goals, in this case, remain the same for my group of students. They're all GED students, so they're all trying to get to that same finish line. But my individual students can progress through that curriculum at different speeds based on their own particular learning needs. And additionally, I tell my students that we don't cover the same curriculum if their placement assessments and the assessments I use are the GED Ready Practice Test, sometimes the Aztec loader, Locator Test, and even the Aztec Unit Assessments or Unit Tests, those pre-tests, those show me if they are already competently understanding the content and skills covered in those sections, either of Aztec or the GED test. And by utilizing this approach, it serves my students who may need to review previously covered materials or students who don't want to waste time covering information they've already mastered or students who need to proceed through the curriculum more slowly or immerse themselves in a certain topic or principle to really quote unquote get it. And so if you think about teaching our adult students where they're at and with what they need, for them, it's really going to accelerate them to their academic goals. And I have had many a student who said, gosh, in high school, if I could have skipped stuff I already knew, I would have gotten through high school so much faster. And in many instances, I have students who come to me who haven't had a GED or a high school diploma, and they take their practice test, and we get those results, and it shows like they could pass all four of these tests tomorrow. And I've had a handful of actually done that past all four in a couple of weeks because we're not going through all the curriculum because we have to go through all the curriculum. We're evaluating what their needs are and then approaching their learning based on those needs. So I'm going to run real quick through our online and print products just so we have like familiar language. We talk about the learning plan. So when we think about those individualized learning plans, those students need to be placed into classes and also given assignments based on their needs. And I do that by verifying their skill attainment, both what they have and also well, before we start, and then also what they have after they've completed those lessons. So I can use the Aztec drills or the book assignments as a way of assessing whether or not they understand and have competency with those skills. What's also really important is that we track that progress. And I'm gonna talk in, de in detail about that in just a bit. These are all of Aztec's online or digital products as well as print products. You can see that we have a variety of different, uh, excuse me, uh, materials that are in Spanish as well as English. Aztec Software is the only preferred publisher partner for the Spanish GED test. That is a claim by GED, not just us. We work in close partnership with them. And as you can see, we have materials that cover the students' needs, both in language arts and the four subject areas, but in particular, language arts and math. 
uh, for COSPIS, for TAID, for NRS, for grade level, however you are looking at data on your site, we got you covered. We have our big complete book, which has all four of our GED subject areas. We have individualized subject area books and workbooks that are both available in English and Spanish. We have our pre-GED series, and I'm super excited to say that we also have workbooks now with our student editions. There's my favorite math book in the entire world, probably my favorite textbook ever. And now we have workbooks to go with those to help our students. We also have our fundamental skills print materials, which has saved my bacon multiple times for students who are at that beginning literacy, either in math, but also in language arts. Those are also available in Spanish as well. So talking about all of our curriculum, let's move to our individualized learning plan. Do we have any questions before I start rolling on this? You're good to go. Okay, thanks. So here's what I do to set up my individualized learning plan for each of my students. I start by figuring out where that student should start working based on a few different assessments. For me, class placement is really important. For my GED students, I most heavily rely on the official GED Ready Practice Test to determine whether or not they're ready. And so these are just kind of the score guidelines I have for myself. If they're at a greater than 145 on that passing test, I'll have them, or that GED practice test, I'll have them work on their GED level work. 140 to 144, I might have them look at specific level work, identify some key lesson or drill pairs that need to be remediated. And then anything lower than a, you know, a 140, I have them just go and start working through the units themselves. And, you know, this is just the GED example, but the same would also be true for the high set as well. Utilizing practice tests, utilizing our practice test that's available for high set on the Aztec platform. Again, for my students, we're just kind of looking at our GED here just for a second, so I'm using them as an example. Here's a, a screenshot of that GED Ready practice test. And you can see in this report that our student, Sam here, he has scored 170, which is great. Just because they get that passing score doesn't mean they're gonna go and test today or tomorrow. You know, as well as I do, for some of our students, it takes them a couple weeks or sometimes even a couple months to be able to get enough funding to test, enough confidence to test, to find childcare to be able to test, there are a variety of different things that keep our students who are at that competency likely to pass green that actually go off and go test. So there are some things that you can do. One of them is that you can build a custom study plan for your student based on their needs. If you look here where it says link your study material, you can have your students or if they're doing that in class with you, you can guide them to link their study material to whatever they have access to, be it Aztec or our print materials. And in doing so, what it's going to do is it's going to kick out, whoops, let me back up one. It's going to kick out, you know, lessons and activities that that student needs to cover and only based on that score. So not everything, but whatever they link their materials to. And that really is assistive or helpful for your students. So for your students who are at not the GED level, maybe at the pre-GED level or lower, you know, there are other ways for you to assess your students. And I want to take a time out here and just also speak briefly to math. So I know for my students who are in my class currently, although we're on summer break, but when I get new students and they come into my GED class, they're placed in my GED class solely based on the on the CASAS reading score. So if your students are based placed in your class just based on a reading score and your class is not a language arts class only, you're also going to be teaching math in that class, I would really encourage you to do an assessment also in math. And for many of my students, and I'm sure I'm preaching to the choir, my students who do 
exceptionally well on the language arts. They don't always do exceptionally well on the math. And so the GED ready practice test for math, and I would say the same is true for the high set practice test for math, is not the greatest test to use for students whose skills are not around the GED or high set or HSE level. If you have students whose math skills tend to be a little bit lower than that, maybe in the seventh or eighth grade or lower level, then it is better to use a different assessment. And that's why I really appreciate and utilize the math locator test for my students who perhaps need a little bit of additional assessment or assistance in their foundation or fundamental math skills. You know, this is very true uh, for students who are struggling with those um, foundation skills. And what I usually do in regards to math when we get started if I just have a little conversation with my students and I ask them a couple questions about math. One, do you like math? No, I can't stand it. I'm terrified of math. Okay. That doesn't always mean something, but it kind of shows me where the student's mentality is. Second thing I ask them is, you know, do you know what 50% is? And if they do, great, then we move on. Do you know what 20% is? Do you know the difference between 20 and 30%? Could you tell me how to figure out 20% of 100? How about 20% of 50? You know, having a little bit of those conversations, if they struggle with those, then I ask them to take the, math, the Aztec locator test in math, and that score will then tell me where that student should be placed in their math classes. And I've had students who scored near perfect on their CASAS reading test, who I then had to place in the fundamental series for math. So it's not uncommon. So on the ASSEC platform, I use all of that testing information to set up individualized learning views for every single one of my students. But before we begin, I think it's really important to note that all of your students on all campuses, they're going to start with, what, with what's called the default view. So the default view of their work is where the student has access to and can see the, the, the class's content based on your site's default setting. Every site's default setting is a little bit different depending on how your Aztec administrator and your Aztec uh, field service rep set up your default setting. I've been on a couple different campuses and some of them look a little bit different. They have more information at the top. They're, less or what have you. They have things sometimes broken down so that the subject areas are only in each class. It really depends on how it's set up on your site. So this is how it's set up on my site. We have the four, the students have access to all four subject areas in the GED level class. This is now our digital literacy class and our students do have access to that as well. You can see also that within each of those units, students have access to all of the activities. But if I were to change the student's learning view, then what I can do is I can limit what that student can see. So let's say here's an example of a student who's passed their language arts test and would like to continue working on social studies. So I can modify their learning view so that when they open their GED classroom, the only thing they have access to is the social studies class. And I can modify that further so that the only unit they have access to is that very first unit of study. And when they open that up, I can limit how many activities they have to see. So usually what I do for a student who is brand spanking new to my class, I will limit this view so they only have access to one subject area, one unit of study, and either the pretest, if we're gonna go through all of those lessons and drills, or we think we might have to go through all of those lessons and drills, or if I'm using the student's uh, GED Ready Practice Test score sheet, I might limit it to just one lesson drill pair. Because what I'm gonna tell the student is then that I want them to take the pretest and then talk with me, or, if they have a lesson and drill pair only, I'm gonna say I want you to do the lesson, take tons of notes, then do the drill, and after the drill, you're gonna check your score. If it's 80% or higher, you're gonna come check with me. 
because I'm trying to train my students to use the Aztec platform the most effective way possible. I want them to go lesson drill, lesson drill. I don't want them to move on from a drill until they scored an 80% on that lesson. If after taking the pretest, they have a waived lesson, like here, I want to be able to have that conversation with the student before they go and do that lesson, because I let my students bypass the waived lesson and take the drill. But if the drill is less than 80%, they have to go back and review that lesson. If all the lessons are waived, I let them skip the entire unit. So those are conversations I want to have with my students along the way. And that is just one of many ways that I can then keep constant track of their progress, which you can see is this bottom part right here. This one keeps popping up and down. So the other thing I want to be able to do is verify their skill attainment before they move forward. That's why I use the learning view, because I can verify that the student has, in fact, scored that 80% before they move forward. The way I verify it is I use Aztec reports. So this is the student detail summary report. There are seven reports total on the Aztec website. I just use this one and then one other one for attendance. I run this one for the past seven days every single time I have my students before we get started. So that when I meet up with them, when I have, when they come to class or when they text me or when we zoom in, I can have, I can give them an informed response and I can tell them like, hey, I noticed you took all of these different tests and I noticed that your scores are continuously coming up. You're doing amazing. Or I noticed like, hey, you're doing these drills and some of your drills have really great scores and some of your drills were not at an 80% yet. We need to go back and review those. I'm actually gonna hide some other stuff in your learning view so you can go back and make sure that you've got that 80% before we move forward. That's the way I can constantly keep track of their progress. And I can also have those informed responses. So let's look at some of these. Hey, I noticed you completed five lesson drill pairs last night, and you scored a 70% or higher on each one. That's totally awesome. An informed response. Instead of just a check-in of like, hey, Karen, I'm checking in. Okay, thanks. Now I'm giving them an re informed response. I'm letting them know I see what they're doing. I can also kind of assist them in any way. Hey, I noticed last night you were below an 80% on that context clues drill, and you took it twice. Don't worry about it. What I would suggest is maybe you try reviewing that lesson again, add some additional things to your notes, and then take the drill again. If you're still under an 80%, text me and let me know, and I'll walk through the lesson with you. Here's one of this, an oldie but a goodie. Hey, I noticed that you took the drill, uh, two drills last night, and both times you took a 10-question drill in less than 10 minutes. That's really fast. Maybe you want to slow down a little bit. Or, hey, you got an 80% and 100%. You're doing great. Do you need more work? Do I need to add more things to your learning view? So that informed and sense, and reform, informed response is not only my keeping track of what the student's doing, but it's shared with the students. Because a lot of times our students just kind of do their work and they don't really pay attention to anything except, oh my God, I gotta get an 80% if Karen's not gonna let me go forward. By pulling that out, you know, we're both keeping track of their work. Okay, so before I move forward, do we have any questions in the, in the from the group? No questions. Okay, thanks Ryan. So the learning views are really great and they're such a great way to add remediation activities to your students' learning plan. They're focused on identified skill needs for either the NRS exam, either for CASAS or for TAVE. And so even if you feel like, oh, I don't know if I necessarily want to do learning plans for all of my students or I'm not sure if I want to do you know, some heavy lifting with that. I can tell you it's very easy to do. It's something that I, I can do remotely on my phone. But what I also about like about the learning views is that I can also add additional 
activities outside of what they're working on for their GEDs or high tests or in their ABE program. And so for TAVE, you know, you have your individual profile report and it's generated when a TAVE test is scored and it'll help identify skills that each student needs to work on. So in that very last column, you see area for next focus, which shows the skills that the learner um, on the show needs to work on um, because they're either partial mastery or non-mastery. These are the skills that a learner needs to start working on. And in some cases, there will be just you know, one or two bullet points or skills. And in that case, that teacher may want to assign just those one or two skills or lessons that correlate to those skills. For CASAS, it's kind of similar. We have the Content Standard Performance Summary Report, and this is for a group of students. And I would say it's pretty likely your students are gonna be in a similar area if you don't have one of those big multi-level classes. So, you know, I always tell people when you run this report to look at the number of items and the percentage of correct responses, and then identify the items that have the biggest number of items, like the most questions on the test, and then also the percentages that are kind of fairly low. So when I look, when I look at that, I can see, oh my gosh, so I have, you know, I, I have this reading 3.12, um, and this standard, I need to make sure that we have some remediation for identifying the key details and citing differences from a text. I could also look at things for the reading 4.4 and determining what a, slide, a text says implicitly. So as we do that, then I can take that learning view and either with TAVE or with, I'm sorry, either with a tutor for TAVE or a tutor for CASAS, I could create a learning view that has remediation just for those sections. So I could figure out, okay, we're gonna go over um, just lesson eight, perhaps, or maybe just lesson six. And so what I can do is I can set up that learning view and I can assign it to my entire class. So because it's in a subject area outside of what they're doing for their GED or high set class or ABE class, because it's in their A tutor for CASAS, I could just assign lessons for either those two uh, CASA standards or for the handful of TABE standards and have the students work on those as well. And so this learning view really does make it easier for you to, you know, uh, take those assessments and really use them for instruction, but particularly for a distance learning or blended class your students could complete those at different times and they could still continue to have access to their other work. The same is true with uh, Aztec's uh, learning, not learning plan or learning view, but their assignments. You could also assign those activities based on those individual plans or individual needs um, from those reports. So with that, I can't believe we've actually finished early. That never happens. Do I have additional questions from the group? You're good. I'm all good. Oh my gosh, we finished early. So by all means, if you do have any additional questions, I can tell you from experience that, you know, when I first heard about the learning views, I was a little intimidated by it. Um, but I worked one-on-one -on -one with our field service rep, and, and everybody has a field service rep. That's what they're there for. They're there to help you either in small groups or individually, walk you through the processes of setting up these learning plans or these um, uh, assignments. And, you know, now it's something I heavily lean on with my students. It really does help. Oh, go ahead, Chris. I'm sorry, I missed this question. It says, how do you set up the learning views for individual students? You might want to go over that one more time. Yeah, let me see. Sorry. Not a broad process. Um, 
but there is a way for you to set up the learning plan for your student. This, of course, is on the student, uh, on the student page itself. But what you would need to do would be uh, on your administrative or teacher, instructor, educator, whatever you call it, side, you would want to go to that class. And then in that class, as the teacher, one of the tabs you'll have, and it's usually way over here, it says learning views. And if you don't have access to that tab, you need to discuss it with your site Aztec administrator. There's somebody on your site who's in charge of your Aztec platform. You need to work with them and perhaps also the field service rep to make sure that that learning plan tool is available to you. It is a tool, it's not an add-on, so it doesn't require an additional purchase. Um, but by then setting up that learning view tool, then you would just from there choose a student and set up a learning plan. And your field service rep can definitely walk you through those processes. It's really quick, it's very easy, it's easy to modify the plan. And again, like I mentioned before, it's something I've done on many occasions in a movie theater or waiting in line somewhere, um, waiting at the gas pump. Um, it's something I can really quickly do on my phone if a student reaches out to me and says, hey, I finished my work and I scored an 80%. Can I get some more? Because we do, you know, we, we try to meet our students where their needs are and sometimes they work outside of our regular hours and I'd, I'd rather get them, give them as much possible time to work on stuff they need to work on whenever I can. So oh, another question has come in. Yeah. How do you uh, get to the informed response page? So there is no informed response page. These are reports from Aztec. So this is the Aztec uh, report that I had mentioned before. This is the student detail, activity detail report. And so within that report, you just need to kind of review it and see if you can find some things that are important to share with your student. So I do a lot of sharing of scores, but I also do some other sharing of other things like, hey, I noticed your, well, these are pre-tests and post-tests, but I also look at the student's learning and say, hey, I noticed you were struggling with your drill and you took five minutes to do the lesson and the lesson has like 55 slides. So I think maybe what you might wanna do is spend some more time on your lesson. So that comes from the de student detail summary report, but there isn't an informed response report. You yourself are going to have to come up with those informed responses based on what you notice in the student's work. Do we have anything else, Chris? Yes, just one more. Um, uh, it keeps flipping. Hang on just a second. Um, how, um, hang on, hang on. Uh, what do I do with assignments? So assignments are a little bit different. Assignments are where you can assign work to the students so they get a notification of both on their dashboard and also up at the notifications up at the top. And it lets the student know that they have something they need to complete. Uh, assignments you can do off of the classroom page and the roster tab. And you can click on the student's name to assign activities to them. You can also assign multiple activities or activities to multiple students as well. So I would really encourage folks to work with their field service rep to um, see how those are set up. And we'll keep this in mind for the future that maybe we need to go in depth on those, on, on how to use both of those functions in one of our upcoming webinars. Anything else I can add, answer real quick, Chris? Um, no, I believe that's it. Um, as we've gone through, I think um, Ryan has been answering some of them. So thank you. Um, it's 2.30, so 2.31. So that's all the questions. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Uh, just keep in mind, next week is Memorial Day weekend, so we are taking the week off, as hopefully you are as well. But we do look forward to meeting with you the week after that, where Chris is going to lead our summer studies 
webinar to give you some tips and tricks to help your students who are either on summer vacation or maybe coming to your class sporadically because of summer vacation. So we look forward to seeing you all in two weeks. Thanks so much. Have a good one.